back. Today I'm going to talk about the Delphi murder case from February 13th, uh, 2017. This was requested a lot that I look at. I'm finally getting some time this morning to do it. Um, I had researched this for a couple weeks now. Uh, one of the things that I want to say right off the bat is this case is one of the most difficult because the police officers, the investigators on this, have done such a tremendous job of keeping things secret. And by that, I mean not giving their hand, not uh, letting the public know what they know. And I promise you, they know a lot more, a lot more than what's out there. Um, so kudos to them for being able to do that. Uh, that's very difficult to do in such a high uh, publicized case like this. But uh, it's also detrimental in a way because I get torn because I know why they do that. But as the case gets older and older, I think sometimes you have to release more and more information in order for uh, the public to get it, in order to get help to solve it. But they, they have, it looks like, released more information as we've gone forward. Uh, so let's get into, into what I found, okay? Uh, if you're new to uh, this channel, my name's Ken Maines. I've invested cold cases for over a decade, maybe uh, two decades now. Uh, I've done it professionally in a law enforcement setting for the district attorney's office. Uh, police officer, I worked undercover with the FBI. I ran a drug task force, uh, blah, blah, blah. The reason I tell you that shit all the time is so when people look at this, they don't think that I'm just some random, you know, folk off the street that's just trying to uh, come up with this stuff. There's actual, you know, I've had training and it's a passion for mine. It always has been. And that's the reason, you know, um, you know, I had the five episode uh, docuseries Hunt for the Zodiac Killer on the History Channel. And I've been on the Reels channel and... Uh, discovery science and all those things i organized a uh a cold case unit that looked at these cases for free uh that had the best in the business i recruited and worked alongside with them from henry lee warner spitz cyril weck joe kenda um just mary ellen o'toole jim clemente just a bevy of great investigators uh so i created that and worked along with them and looked at hundreds of cool cases. So that gives a foundation of where I'm coming from. So when I looked at this case uh, of the victims, Abby Williams and uh, Liberty German, 13 and 14 year olds, if you're here looking at this, you probably already know about this case. So I don't want to rehash everything, but they were found murdered uh, February 14th of 2017. Um, a day after they went missing. So they went missing February 13, 2017. The timeline, okay, when you look at cases like this or any any unsolved case, you, you got to do a timeline, okay? When was the opportunity that they were killed? A timeline tells you a lot of things. Uh, it, can, it can start with uh, uh, witnesses, interviewing them, where were they during this time, it eliminates suspects, timelines, help create a criminal profile, believe it or not, and the reason it does that is because you can tell a lot by a time of day, whether it was planned, whether it was unplanned, and we're going to get into that. Um, so am I, am I very confident about this assessment? Um, yes and no. And I, I want to qualify that by saying <laughs> it's very difficult doing an assessment on this case because you don't know what the police know on this. Some older cases, okay, this is 2017, uh, let's say 1975, you've had 40 years for information to become available. And sometimes that those are a lot easier, even though they are a lot older. This one is very difficult. Again, you don't know what police know. Therefore, I wasn't able to research uh, that a lot. But from what I was able to research, from what was out there, and going off of the facts. I've come up with a pretty good conclusion of what I think 
uh, took place, which could help, obviously, eventually solve the case. So let's start off with the timeline. At 1.35, it appears that the victims were dropped off at this um, hiking trail, which had a very long bridge. And I want to say that I'm not an expert in this. OK, there's people that know every single thing there is about the case, just like John Benet Ramsey case. I do not. And I don't claim to be. But I'm going off of the generalization of what I know. So 135, they're dropped off at 207. Uh, Liberty posts a photo on uh, a social media. I believe it was Snapchat of Abby on this bridge. It is a long kind of worn down bridge, very deep. Uh, drop to the water or uh, at least uh, land down below of some sort. Very uh, dangerous type of bridge, if you ask me, uh, by looking at the pictures. But apparently all the kids and stuff went there and they hung out and it was known and people, it was connected to a hiking trail. So when you would come off of this hiking trail, you would enter onto this bridge. Uh, at 2.07, she posts this picture. She was supposed to meet uh, their father that was going to pick him up at 3.15. And they didn't show. At 5.30, they're reported missing and they are found the next day. So you have almost an hour gap, okay? At 2.07 in the afternoon to 3.15 when they didn't show. You can deduce, and you know I'm all about deducing. You know, you that's how you solve these cases. You, you start off with possibilities. And you deduce the probabilities. And somewhere in between, you end up finding your guy. So I can deduce, you can deduce, that between 2.07 and 3.15 is when this event occurred. That's a short window. So that's good for investigators. Uh, what happened? Were they killed during that time? We don't know. But we know something took place. Most likely the abduction. And in my opinion, most likely murdered. Um, I forgot, I failed to mention, so it would have been Abby or, uh, Liberty German's sister, Kelsey, I believe is her name. She reached out to me probably a year, maybe two years ago to help them with this case. And she had sent me a message via Twitter or Facebook. I'm not sure which, or might've even been my website. And I, yeah, absolutely. You know, free of charge. This is this is a heinous crime. Okay, and I, I absolutely do whatever. I'm tell the investigators I'm here to help. And uh, I didn't hear back from her, so I don't know what happened with that. But she had reached out to me, and I wanted her to know that I was there to help, and I'm still here to help. Anything that I can do. So I want to look at the evidence. There isn't a lot because we don't know a lot. Usually when you have evidence, I include the body or in this case, bodies. You don't have that. Um, you have the bodies, of course, but the autopsies are sealed. You, I don't know what was found. Uh, we don't even know how they were murdered. Okay. I started to, when I researched all cases, but specifically this case, you always want to go after police reports. We don't have that. Second best for me is newspaper. There was some of that. There was a lot of that. And that's what I went off of. I never go off of Reddit, crime boards, web sleuth boards. Half of that is bullshit. And I'm here to tell you right now. And you can disagree all you want. Um, I've had cases that were on it. And I can tell you a lot of it is lies. And why people do that, why they make up shit is why... This is just like why trolls are out there. They got nothing better to do with their life. So you have to be very cautious of what you read and take as fact. What I take as fact is press conferences when police are giving answers to the press's questions. Newspaper reports, uh, which have to be usually validated by an editor. So those are the things that I take in. I was able to look at some stuff and look at what evidence they had. And I could see that there was no autopsy done. So we don't know how they were murdered. But I 
broke from my mold a little bit so because I was so intrigued about this case that I went to a website about the murders. And I I I didn't engulf myself in it. I I just quickly looked at it, but something that caught my eye was two scanner audio clips. So I'm sure everybody knows or had of a scanner when police go to a scene, you know, a scanner can pick up radio communication. Um, as a drug cop, we are always aware of that because a lot of times our snitches would come in and say, hey, look, uh, I was in buying uh, heroin from this guy. He has a police scanner, so he knows when you're coming if you have radio traffic. So I was always very cognizant of never putting anything on the rover. As an undercover cop, if you are, know that. Never. Never. But anyhow, in this case, it if... And big if, if this is legit, it sounded it, but I, I, I don't know. The scanner report from when they were looking for the victims, one of the investigators relayed and said, I found some evidence, send an evidence bag over here. And they said, what kind of evidence? And he said, girls undergarments under the bridge. That's big if it's related. And I'm sure it is, or he wouldn't have called it in. Um, it's possible it could have been old undergarments from somebody having sexual relations under the bridge or whatever, but I doubt it. If that's legit, there's a piece of evidence under the bridge, which means the assault happened there, but I, I, I find all that hard to believe, okay? So I'm not sure if that is legit or not, so I don't really want to comment on that too much. They also, the investigator on a scanner report, said there was a cigarette butt in the water. So that seems significant. Okay, obviously, if he would have called it in uh, and requested an evidence bag, it being in the water um, close to the bodies where they were found seems to be significant. So what happened? Okay, for those that don't know, these two girls were on this the side of the bridge, at the beginning of the bridge. They are accosted there by an individual whom one of the victims captured on her cell phone. This is extremely important, and it also is extremely heroic, and it also tells you something about this crime, okay? Everyone probably has seen pictures of this guy, the way he's dressed, walking towards the victims, and they take a cell phone and they record him coming. They only show a brief second clip of this, okay? The police released that, but there's a lot more. Trust me. So why did they do that? Why did they feel the need to videotape this guy? It's important, okay? This guy made them feel threatened that they did this, and that is evidence, okay? We now know, hey, this guy is responsible. He's coming towards them. They feel threatened enough to record him. Uh, he's he's the guy, okay? So, so we have that. Eventually, they release audio from this video clip, this short video clip, where he says, guys, down the hill, that is evidence. That's very important evidence. Um, what can we tell by that short audio clip? Well, they released it, obviously, for somebody to recognize the voice. Nobody has done that so far that we know about. But if you listen to that audio, you can glean something from that. And i tell you what I gleaned. When he says guys down the hill, his emphasis on guys as if he's already told them once. And now he's telling them again, guys down the hill. It wasn't guys down the hill, guys down the hill. It was guys down the hill. Okay. So to me, he's already told them once to get down that hill. That hill is off of the foot of the bridge where they were accosted by this gentleman. And he's telling them to go down over this hill, which leads down a trail Cross the creek, 
to a place in the woods where their bodies were eventually found, about a half a mile from where they were accosted. So not a great distance, but that distance tells us a lot. It tells me a lot as an investigator. So what, what does it tell me? Okay, so we can start deducing some things from that. And one of the things is the crick. Much like the John Bonet Ramsey video that I did where I felt that the pineapple being either partially eaten or not eaten at all found was significant, very significant, because I felt something happened during this pineapple getting ready or being eaten, that it was something disturbed that. I still feel that way. In this case, to me, the creek is the biggest piece of evidence, okay? And you know, you're saying, well, how the hell are you coming up with that, okay? Where are you pulling that out of? You know, it's got to be the video and the audio. Yes, they are obviously probably the most important because people can uh, identify the suspect. Hopefully, at least that's what the hope is. But for me, the crick can tell, it tells you a lot, okay? And I'm going to get into how important that is in a little bit. I got so many notes here that I'm bouncing around, but uh, I'm going to come back to why and how important that creek is to this case. Rumors, okay? In cases like this, famous cases, and I already discussed it, why some people lie or, or make up stuff. There is a lot of rumors, and some of them may have merit to it. Apparently, there was an abandoned barn or an abandoned type of building near where these bodies were found. Um, I looked at a map. I did see what people were talking about, but they weren't killed in that abandoned building. And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. Is because you're not going to kill somebody in a nice secluded abandoned building and then drag them or carry them two of them away from that and spot being seen by somebody the physical exertion that takes place to do that it's unnecessary you wouldn't do that so they weren't killed in in this abandoned barn so you could dispel that rumor they were killed exactly where they were found in those woods uh, leaked text messages. I've briefly seen something like a heading of something of leaked text. I didn't even read them. I didn't even get into that because it just seems so uh, fake. It could be legit. You don't know. But if you don't know, you can't you can't go off of that. Uh, there was also a picture that said there was a man hiding behind a tree and you could see it. Again, those are things that, man, just like at a Lisa Lamb case where you just start going down rabbit holes, okay, and start trying to nitpick because you can't you your brain can't solve these things and you're trying to find any little piece of detail and it takes you away from the the evidence where you should be looking so dispel all those rumors okay none of that matters um let's get back to the the crick okay was this a planned murder or was it unplanned? Let's talk about that, okay? This will lead us to the, the crick. You have to determine that. You have to determine whether it was planned or unplanned. And the reason you got to do that is because it will lead you to your offender. So there's been most people, I'm going to say 90% of the people would say that it was planned. And the reason for that is because the person had to know the location uh, and be familiar with the bridge the down over the hill to the trail. There's some people that said it was unplanned. Now, I see both sides. The reason that I think, you know, I, I got it here. I wrote down why I thought it, both planned and unplanned. Um, unplanned. Okay, let's look at the time of day that this happened. We already established in the timeline it was between pretty much 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 
why, if it was planned by an experienced serial killer, would you plan to do this <clears throat> on an unseasonably <clears throat> warm day? And that weather is going to play an important part in this. I went back and looked at the weather for that, that day in, in Delphi, and it was 23 degrees early in the morning, and it got all the way up to uh, 52 degrees. Okay, so in the afternoon, it was unseasonably warm that day. But why would a, an experienced serial, serial killer plan to do this when a lot of people are going to be on that trail? Nice day, finally. You know, we have all winter. Everybody is cooped up. They're cold. It's going to be 50 degrees. We're going to get out. And we're going to hike. We're going to do things. So why would a planned person do this at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon when people are going to be there? That's one reason that I believe that it was unplanned or could be unplanned. Uh, number two reason unplanned. Victims. You have two. Two victims. A lot harder to control two victims than just one. If you were planning this murder, would you not plan for a single alone female? Yes, you would. Why, why two? Okay. Two leads me to believe unplanned. Okay, happened upon it. Circumstances are there. You're walking across this bridge, you're looking around. I don't see anybody. Two girls, two teenage girls, set the plan in motion and, and go. Or you wouldn't be setting the plan in motion. The plan would hit you. Obviously, it would have been something that he had fantasized about for a long time, and the opportunity presented itself, and he acted upon it. Now, we don't know how they were killed. We don't know if they were shot they were stabbed if they were strangled that would if i knew that that would take a lot of guesswork out of this equation but we don't um i do believe that they weren't shot and the reason i believe that is because i did read an interview that the prosecutor at the time he didn't prosecute this case obviously but he was in office at the time i believe his name is irvine gave where he he was giving a scenario where he said the killer left a couple signatures. Okay. So a signature is something unique to that, that killer that he does or did to those bodies that if he killed again, or if he had killed again, he had left those same signatures and you're able to link that. So this prosecutor said, I'll give you an example. And he said something, and I wrote it down here verbatim. He was talking about a person that was, being killed with a gun and the way that he framed it and again i am picking this apart and i could be wrong but the way he framed his response was as if these victims abby and liberty were not killed with a gun he had made mention that he had been to other murders and prosecuted other murders let's say that were killed with a gun and the way that he presented that made me believe that they were not killed with a gun. But I don't know that, and so I don't want to speculate. Um, I would say that this offender more than likely had a gun on him uh, or a knife. And the reason that I can deduce that is because he, he accosted them and took them to a different location, okay? I don't think he would be able to do that without a weapon on his person. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit later too. Um, but we get back to the unplanned versus planned. Now, I gave you the reasons for an unplanned murder. The two victims, uh, multiple victims, is sometimes, but not always, indicative of an unplanned crime. The time of day. Now I want to talk about why it could be a planned murder. It could be because he knew the area. Okay, he had to know that railroad bridge. 
somebody stumbling upon that from out of town. It's not a tourist destination from what I understand. Um, but let me tell you why I think that it was a planned murder or at least planned sexual assault. Let's start with that. What can you tell about the way the offender was dressed? Okay. He's wearing a blue jacket, a gray hoodie underneath that jacket. A brown shirt appears to be tucked out. Kind of bulky. Okay. What, what does that tell you? Anything? Let me tell you what it tells me. Go back to the weather for that day. 23 degrees in the morning. 52 degrees by 2 o'clock in the afternoon when this happened. Look how he's dressed. He's still dressed in cold weather gear. Okay? That tells me, more than likely, that this was an experienced killer. And he had been in that area, that park, since the morning, trolling. Now, what is trolling? BTK killer described trolling great because he used to troll. You're looking for victims, okay? That's what they do. They call it trolling. You're out looking, okay? Perfect opportunity. What, what am I looking for? This guy, by the way he was dressed, I believe... He was up since the morning when it was in the 20s. That's how he's dressed. The victims are not dressed like that. Okay? And the victims were dropped off there at 1 o'clock. So by that, we can deduce that it was already getting warm in the 50s. They had on the victims, I believe, from what I saw, and I could be wrong, and you can correct me, but at least the picture that was posted of Abby on Snapchat um, she had a light jacket on. Look at this guy. He's bundled up to all belief. So to me, he had been out there and he's waiting for the opportunity to create a sexual assault or a murder. So what do I believe? Was it unplanned or planned? Well, I'm going to get into that. But I just gave you two different reasonings for why people believe it's planned and why why it's unplanned. Okay, we went through the evidence. Um, the the sketch. The sketch is part of the evidence. There's a little bit of confusion because two different sketches were released. One showed an older guy with a beret and a goatee. That was the initial one. And then sometime later, they released a different one. Now, why? Why is that? Well, I believe initially... A witness was probably interviewed and said, hey, I've seen this guy coming from that bridge, from that area, and they put out that sketch right away. We want to talk to this guy. Uh, I believe that that's what happened. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I believe. And then later, through more interviews, more enhancements from the video, from the cell phone, from one of the victims, and probably... The FBI criminal profiling unit, they created another sketch. And what was important about that second sketch, and I wrote it down, was that they said that the person should probably be between 18 and 40, but have a youthful appearance. That was key to me when I looked at a couple of the suspects. So let me talk about that suspect before I forget. This Recently, I believe there was a guy named James Chadwell that was arrested for kidnapping a nine-year-old girl and sexually assaulting her. And he must have been very close to the Delphi area. They showed a picture of him. He is, like, in his 40s. But when I looked at the picture, I was like, man, he looks like 18, 19, 20 years old. So when I seen that they had said he would have a youthful appearance, I was like, wow, okay. I'm not saying that's the guy. I have no idea, and I don't, I don't know the particulars of 
uh, if he's linked to this case at all, other than some news reports that I read. But I did see that picture and the youthful appearance quote did stick with me for him. And he, he did resemble a sketch to me, but you know, that does, that doesn't matter to me. I mean, we've seen in DB Cooper, how everybody resembles a sketch. So, uh, I don't get too caught up in that. Um, Let's get to my, my, bef no, before I get to my conclusion, let's say, I wrote down a couple of notes that I felt important. Just like every case that I go through, when I read the police reports, I read it the first time through like a story. And I've said this before, I just let it develop in my head like I'm reading a story. Second time through, things that, just a statement, something that doesn't feel right in my stomach, I jot down. That way, when you're done with everything, you go back to it. And that's where you start your investigation. So I did that. I wrote down some stuff here that I just felt was important. And I wanted to go through it. The half mile from the bridge uh, where the bodies were found, I wrote that down. I thought that was important because obviously uh, a half mile... Is not that is not that far, and it's certainly walking distance. Controlling two victims, we'll get into to that on how he did that. The picture of the suspect on the bridge, the short video clip which they took a still from and made a photograph. He has his hands in his pockets. Now, why did I write that down? I felt that odd because when I looked at photographs of that bridge in the spacing in between the planks. I felt that odd because to me, you almost want to keep your balance in a way in order to not fall. But he has his hands in his pockets walking across that plank. Does it mean anything? Maybe not. But to me, it struck out as his hands are cold possibly, and he has them in there, or he's concealing something in his pocket. Um, and I would surmise that it probably was the latter of the two, but it, sh it stood out to me. Uh, I wrote down warm day, but he's dressed heavy. Okay, we already went into that, why he's, I felt that he was dressed so heavy. It appears to me, more than likely, and I don't know this, but I, I guarantee the cops know this, the investigators from that video that the victim was shooting from her cell phone. Apparently, she had kept the video rolling and stuck it in her pocket. That's why I'm confident that the investigators know more than what they're, they're saying. I thought, and I wrote this down, that it's possible she recorded the entire sequence all the way up to their murders. Um, but I did watch a press conference, or read transcripts from a press conference, where that specific question was asked, and the investigator said, no, the murders were and the assaults were not on that video. Could he be lying? Yes, it's possible. But I guess you would have to know that type of cell phone, but if she was recording, and this is documented, that she was recording and stuck it in her pocket to conceal the video, but the audio and the video was still recording in her pocket, why would it stop until the battery ran out? Okay, so that, that's a question that I have, and I'm not sure if the investigators are holding that information back or not. Um, if it is, that's, that's chilling. Uh, but anyhow... I believe, this is my opinion, that the offender was following them at some point, walked past them, said something, stared at them, did something to make them feel uncomfortable. He went to the all the way to the end of that bridge and started walking back towards them. That is when they took out the cell phone and was and recorded him. Now, the only reason they did that is because he had done something that made them feel uncomfortable. It's the only reason, okay? 
So as the offender, why walk that whole length of that bridge or walk past them at least, maybe turn around on that bridge and come back towards them? That's what I believe happened. I have written down here, he didn't walk the same way back. I'm going to get into that. Um, to me, that means he's familiar with the area. It wasn't a robbery. The kids don't have anything. I've seen that somewhere. Okay. If it was a robbery, number one, they would have taken her cell phone. Big piece of evidence. He would have picked it up and said, oh, shit, I was recording me. You know, I'd take it. That, that didn't happen. So robbery is completely out of the the motive here. Um, again, the he, I, I believe, based off of the way he was dressed, uh, the way he said, guys, down the hill, he was becoming impatient. That's my belief of this offender. He was becoming impatient, had been waiting around all day, for the perfect opportunity, probably, most likely waiting for a single lone female to come across, but there wasn't. There was couples. It was documented, you know, at least one couple was seen. You're not going to do that because the male is a threat. Uh, he's getting impatient. He finally sees the two girls. Not such a threat. They're younger. Okay, now I'm going to make my move. I have that written down. I have written down here, listen when talking to more than one person. And I have in quotation, guys. This is important to find out who this suspect is. Okay. He says, guys, down the hill. He doesn't say, girls, down the hill. He doesn't say, you too, down the hill. He specifically uses the word guys, down the hill. So if somebody knows this offender, they have, he's going to have that uh, signature, you know, it's, he's going to have this way of speaking where he uses the term guys in his work environment. You know, let's say he's, he's a, uh, he's a construction worker. Okay. And he's working and he's trying to get a job done and the rest of the people are goofing off behind him or whatever and bothering him. He's going to turn around and say, guys, cut it out. That's key, okay? Something small like that. Guys, remember that. Because when this offender is arrested, and I believe he will be arrested, people are going to come forward and they're going to say, how did I miss that? When I was at work with him, he would say, you know, guys, keep it down. So something small like that, remember. All right. What do I think happened? Let me get to my conclusion here. Again, very hard, very hard because I don't know everything the police know. And you never do sometimes, but in this case, it's even twofold. You don't even know how they were murdered. I don't know whether they were strangled. That tells me something about the suspect. I don't know whether they were shot. That tells you something about the suspect. It's not personal. It was uh, something else. Uh, so many things you can tell just by murder. But what do I know? I know where they were accosted from. They were marched a half a mile across the creek. To a location in the woods where their bodies were found. This was, in my opinion, based off of the evidence that I have seen, taken into in fact, the, whether it was planned, unplanned, I believe planned, the way he was dressed, the victims, the cell phone recording, the location of the bodies, where they were accosted, the time of day, the weather. You take all of that, the totality of that, into consideration, I think this was a planned abduction with sexual assault being the motive. And he was leading them 
out of those woods and something happened. What do I mean by that? Why cross the creek? Okay, if you know that area, which we've already deduced that we feel, at least I feel, that the offender did not happen upon this location. He knew the location. He knew that it was going to be a warm day, nice day. He's been out trolling, looking for a victim since early morning. He was becoming impatient. He finds two girls, don't offer that much of a th threat. He would rather it be one of them, but it's two of them. You know what? I'm impatient. I'm going to get this done. Nobody's around. I'm going, to, I'm going to, it's planned. I have this fantasy in my mind. I've been rehearsing it for years, months, who knows. I'm going to take it into effect. So he approaches them, says something as he passes them, looks at them weird. They start videotaping them. He, he pulls a gun on them, pulls a knife on them, something threatening, and says, guys, down the hill. He says it impatiently. One, because he's been there trolling all day, all morning. Two, he's already told them once, more than likely, and they didn't listen. So now the emphasis on guys, down the hill. They go down this hill. They walk. They cross a creek. Okay? This is paramount. Because if this guy knows the area, he knows that there's a creek there. Why, why cross that creek if you don't have to? Okay? You don't. You don't if you don't have to. Okay? You kill them before the creek. You're, let's say you're, you're, you have a gun on the victims. You have a knife on the, one of the victims and the other victim is going to listen and you're leading them, and you see that creek. I don't care whether it's ankle high or it's chest high. It doesn't matter. It's a creek. It's an obstacle. And you have no reason to cross that except to get to the other side. If he was not leading them out there, he would have killed them right there. He sees the creek, and he says, you know what? Nah. I'm going to kill him right here. He only kills them, from what I understand, 50 feet from that creek. So it isn't like, okay, I'm on this side of the creek. I'm looking around. It's not secluded enough. I got to go to the other side of the creek where it's more secluded and wooded. I don't know that because I'm not there. But from the pictures that I saw, no. Kill him right there on this side of the creek. That way, you don't have to cross the creek. You don't have to get wet. All this. The reason he crosses the creek is because he parked his car on that side of the creek. There's a cemetery there. He parked there and came in that way. And that's where he accosted them. That's the only reason to cross that creek. Think about it. So you're abducting these people, these victims, and you're going to cross that creek and take them to your car and take them to your home, which is probably within, you know, 10 mile radius of where that's at. But that's your plan. Something happens when you cross that creek. It, and let me say that a couple pictures that I saw, the creek, at least on, on the picture that I saw, had a bit of a bank to get up. Okay, so I can envision him leading them across the creek. They get up the creek. He slips or something, had a little bit of trouble getting up that bank. They started to run. And the, the, the fantasy, the plan is out of whack. I kill him there. And that's where it happens. He wasn't able to fulfill his plan of taking them to his vehicle which was parked more than likely at that cemetery or around that area, that's the only reason. Guys, think about it. It's the only reason to cross the creek if it's a planned event. And we've determined it was planned. It was an unplanned event. Okay, well, he doesn't know that that creek's there, um, you know, stuff like that. 
but we've already determined it's planned. If it's planned, he's more, there, that's the only reason to cross the creek. You're not going to want to get wet. I don't care that it's 52 degrees out. It's still chilly. Okay? And when you get wet, it's even worse. So the only reason to cross that creek is to lead them somewhere. And it's my belief he had parked there and was leading them to a vehicle to abduct them. And something happened. They ran, most likely scenario, something where he killed them there. Were they sexually assaulted there? Big question. Because now his fantasy is messed up. So maybe there was not even a sexual assault, even though I believe firmly that the intent was a sexual assault. But once the offender's fantasy is ruined, him kidnapping them and taking them and chaining them up or doing what he planned to do with them, once that's ruined, does he go through with the fantasy? Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, I the time of day, 1.30, nice day. I just, I have a hard time believing that he would sexually assault both of them in the woods after his fantasy was derailed. Uh, but, hey, I, I, I don't know any everything, you know? So that's my belief by looking at this with an unbiased set of eyes that I think most likely occurred. I would certainly want to know how they were murdered I most certainly would want to know whether they were sexually assaulted, whether the undergarments that were found under the bridge, which leads me to believe that it wasn't related, but I have a hard time believing that if those that audio of that scanner was real, why it wouldn't be. Unless he threw the undergarments in the water and they floated down there. I don't know. I don't know the area that much. So I, I got written down here. My mind would change possibly in regards to the undergarments because of where they were found and if they related to one of the victims, if they were sexually assaulted there. Uh, I just think the totality of everything leads me to believe that he was going in, going to abduct them. And he certainly wanted to abduct only one, okay? If there had been a different lone female there, even if she was older in her 20s or 30s, I believe the offender would have abducted her, taken her down that trail, across the creek, into the cemetery or the surrounding area where his vehicle was parked and would have sexually assaulted, raped, kidnapped, killed, um... But he was growing impatient, had been there all morning, which was evidenced by the amount of clothing that he was wearing and his voice and guys down the hill tells me he was running out of patience. He was going to kill and abduct and assault somebody that day. It happened to be two girls, younger girls who didn't offer too much of a threat to him in his mind, although apparently these girls were a lot braver than he thought. Because number one, they captured him on video and audio. Two, I believe they tried to run, uh, tried to fight back and something right on the other side of that creek bed. And more than likely, he slipped coming up that creek bed or something that they were quick on the draw and started to run or whatever happened. I have a hard time believing they were shot. Um... I would think somebody would have reported gunfire in that area if that happened. So, you know, he would have he would have caught them quick, and more than likely, I, I hate to surmise this, but I would say that they would have been stabbed. More than likely, if it was a planned murder, okay, because you. You'd have a weapon of opportunity, okay? That's how you can tell planned or unplanned. You know the death. Let's say they were beaten about the head with a rock. You can say that is more than likely an unplanned event. Because if it was planned, the offender would have brought a weapon with him. He's not going to bring a rock, right? He's going to bring a gun. 
he uses a rock because something happened that he wasn't expecting. An argument escalated, and you know, I'm going to grab the closest object. That is an unplanned murder. We don't even know that here. So it's very, very hard to offer a accurate assessment of the case. I could tell so much and I could do so much more have I just known how they were murdered. So without that, this is the conclusion that I had come up with. Um, it was a planned sexual assault, kidnapping. He was leading them across that creek to get to his car, to take them somewhere to assault them. He probably had restraints with him underneath his uh, heavy coat in the pocket something i don't know whether they were restrained we don't know that i i doubt that they were restrained at that point in time it's easier to lead them out of an area unrestrained and just threatened with violence a knife or a gun so that's what i believe happened in this case uh it was this is a tough one and i i think i'll probably come back to this later on and look at it but break it down. Don't go off of innuendos, rumors. Go off of the facts. Simplify it. Look at certain things. How, you know, in this case, how the offender was dressed, the weather for that day, his voice on that brilliant recording and brave recording that those girls made. Uh, little things like body location. Why across that creek? Okay. That's that's huge to me. Okay. So that's what I believe happened in this case. If more evidence are uh, to come to light, I would maybe change my opinion on this on certain things. But again, with what I've worked with, this is the way it is. And if uh, Kelsey German, uh, you had reached out to me a couple years ago and... I, I am so sorry for your loss. And again, if you want my help, uh, all you have to do is ask. Okay, I'm always available, and I'll do whatever I can to help you. And that goes for all family members and victims in cold cases. You know, you have to be passionate. I don't care what vocation you're in. I don't care if you're a doctor. Anybody go to the doctor's office? I know you have. And it felt like you're just being pushed through. You know, they don't care. You're just a number. They see so many patients a day. You know, it's heartbreaking. And then you find that one doctor, that one chiropractor that sits down and listens to you. And when you talk to them, you can feel their passion for their job and they're wanting to help you. Okay, that's the doctor I want. That's the chiropractor I want. You know, that's the way I am, okay? I want to help. It's in my DNA. It's in my blood, okay? It, it, it's why I created ASOC, you know, and had all those great cold case investigators, you know, Henry Lee, Joe Kenda, and the criminal profiling, because I thought it was so very important to be able to look at a crime from different lenses. We've been force-fed that, okay, a detective back in the 50s, that's how you look at a case. And then DNA comes around and now it's a forensic, you know, you have to look at a case through a forensic. And then it was psychology. You got to know the criminal profiling. No, you need all of that. Okay. You need someone that's educated in all of that and to look at it through different lenses. Okay. What does a criminal profiler see and why does he say those things? What does a DNA expert see based off of the evidence? And why do they say that? What does the old school detective see? That's what I do. I take all of those, you know. That's why I have my master's degree and stuff in criminal profiling. And was a detective for 15 years. And started my own DNA lab with uh, Susanna Ryan from ASOC. Because there needs to be somebody who is well-versed in all of those lenses in order to put together a crime scene assessment of what happened. 
It's so important. So I just have the passion to do it. And I, and I, I love it. I, I just, oh, anyhow, I get fired up when I talk about this because it's so important. You know, it's so important to get the facts, to have the passion, to put it all together and to help. And for those investigators that are so arrogant and so, I, they, they, don't, they don't want help from anybody. And that just infuriates me. Because um, when I was on the job and I was looking at cases, I sought out help from everybody. I don't care if it was a, a housewife from Minnesota. She could see something that I missed. I want her to tell me, what did you see? Or a professional like Henry Lee and everything in between. So if you're an investigator, don't think and don't be so arrogant to think that you can't get help from somebody else because you can. That's how cases are solved. Okay. We all have to work together. So Delphi murders. That's my rant. That's my assessment and take it for what it's worth. And hopefully this helps somebody. And I hope, you know, people listening to this, it brings up something and they're like, I heard this guy say guys all the time at my work and he calls the tip line and this case is solved. And I, it's just my hope that all cold cases are solved, but I want this one solved as soon as possible. And I, I, I'll probably do an update to this case after I look into it further because there's just so much stuff that intrigues me on it. Delphi Murders. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I would say like, subscribe, but I don't care about any of that shit. Just watch, enjoy, and hopefully this helps solve a murder. Mains out. Yeah.